So I am not 100% sure if the first guest is going to meet on here. And that's okay, no problem. But I want to use this as an opportunity to let you all know that you can schedule a time for me for Saturdays, a half hour to talk with me, or to talk with yourself about <clears throat> about anything, really anything. Um, I do want to help the content stay more focused on health, like physical health or emotional health, spiritual health, um, or you know anything that will help with that, um, in, which involves the truth of matters, like the divine truth, humility with our emotions, or or love in general. Yeah, and and. Um, I'd really love other people to enjoy this and I really feel like I can help or they can help me and other people watching it vicariously could get some use from it too. Oh, someone wants to join. Here it is. Hello. Hey buddy, how's it going? Hey Ernest, how are you? <laughs> I'm pretty good. This was trying to get some sun and then the clouds came and covered it all up. Damn it. I know. And then I saw that I had to download this app, so. Oh, okay. So you must be like on your phone or iPad or something like that. On my phone, yeah. Okay. Can you, can you see me? Uh-uh. Oh. Um, you might be able to on the screen. Um, there's a picture of me, like video, and there's this salad that my soulmate made for me, and it's just like freaking kick-ass, and I'm really happy about it. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't know how. It yeah. says uh, it just has an RG mm. well, yeah. in, a box, in a box, that's all. Let me try this. See if the RG box changes. But yeah, dude, hey, thank you so much for doing this. I'm, I'm really happy that you popped on. I get to hear your voice and hear what you want to chat about. <laughs> yeah, you too. <laughs> it always uh, brings a person more into focus. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I got the feeling that you wanted to talk about soulmates, um, but, yeah. but I wasn't sure. But at the same time, um, is today day nine or day 10 that you're on Fruits? Day, day 10. We, Congrats, man. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I've done it before. Yeah, you're definitely no to eating fruit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's always, there's always a little bit of a battle that tries to go on in your head during it. <laughs> you know, especially if uh, right now, because I don't live alone, so I made some uh, cooked vegan food for my mom, but I never, ever cook anything with animal, anything in it for anybody. If they want that, I'm like, make it yourself. It's not yeah. happening for me. Yeah, you know, when I was fasting a lot, it really helped me when I was cooking things for people. <laughs> like it was just like it was almost like that was fun and um, and perhaps it was distancing me from some emotions that I didn't want to think about. But I did that a lot. Yeah, and I kind of, I mean, I there's a part of me that gets off on the smell. Mm. It's almost it's almost like I'm eating it, but I'm not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, <Not> true. <clears throat> When I first ate a lot of fruit, um, not only did a lot of like crazy stuff happen, like, uh, well, one of the craziest things that happened was my sense of smell. And I felt like I was eating things because I was just walking by smelling them. And I'd walk by smelling someone's perfume and for the first time realizing how toxic it smelled. And I just like, <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, I know. I can't stand the smell of artificial smells. But um, this particular uh, fruit, feast or fruit cleanse whatever you want to call it it has had me coughing and oh. hmm. especially in the morning but uh like i just you know i can't stop it, it and even now i feel like i want to cough a little bit hmm. <coughs> but um what's because we're going through this supposed pandemic yeah so uh um, people are, are, you know, when you cough, they freak out. I'm like, uh, you know, we coughed before too. Calm down. It's not a dry cough. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. So, so you've got, so with you doing this fruit stuff, um, you've got mucus coming out of your lungs to get expelled through there. That's great. Oh yeah. yeah I got a lot of mucus coming out. What's that? A lot of mucus coming out. 
That's great. You know, a lot of people just, just don't realize how good that is when that's happening. They, they view it like such a bad thing. Like, oh, I, I know. I have to go to a doctor. And, but people like yourself and myself were like, we look, well, I don't know about you. I'll speak for myself. I look forward to getting sick because then I know I'm getting things out. <laughs> right, right. Well, I mean, I just listen to my body and my, whatever my body wants to do. I never felt like, I, well, I mean, maybe for a second, I, you know, where you start to get that little bit of weird feeling in the back of your throat. There's been several times, especially in the first week that um, I started to feel like that. And I was like, oh, okay, I hope not. But maybe here we go. And then it would just go away. Mm. Mm. So I don't know. I mean, my body's having all, it's, it's just different. Every time you do this, it's different. That's all I can say. It's not, it's definitely not the same experience. Yeah. And you know, I'm starting to, after the last two years, I'm starting to have a feeling that a lot of the differences has a lot to do with emotions. I'm still exploring that though. One, yeah. of, one of the biggest things that has helped me with that. And I was really happy that you mentioned that, uh, was this idea of like a soulmate. Um, and that was something that to me was more so introduced. Like when I was a kid, it's almost like when you're a child, you know what soulmate is, but you don't know what the words are. And then you grow up and you hear this new age concept of a soulmate. Like, oh, we have many soulmates or, oh, uh, yeah, oh, this is my soulmate. This is the person I love the most that I have the most codependent addiction <laughs> quality for. Um, yeah, yeah. Are you a, like, um, I mean, what is your idea of a soulmate? Well, just after what you just said about when we're kids, what it brought up for me was, um, you know, I used to have dreams, very, very, very vivid dreams. Like I was really, like it was really happening. And one that I'll never forget was, um, I was probably nine or 10 years old, maybe around that time, eight or nine. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, probably, nine, I, I want to say nine. Anyways, and, um, you know, I, and I had a, uh, in my dream, I was where we lived, but there was this older guy. And when I say older, I mean like five years ago. No, like uh, probably 20, mm -hmm. something like that, 19, 20, 21, something like that. And I was uh, showing him our property and i just knew that i had this like you know when you just know you have a connection with somebody yeah i mean of course at that age i wasn't thinking sex because that you just don't think of those things well i didn't anyway except for me i did when I was <laughs> well i didn't really know what all that meant yeah at that age i was pretty naive um so anyways you know the dream you know everything's going great and then suddenly I don't remember who it was because we couldn't see them, but there, and, and it, my mind probably took it from, you know, a Western movie or something I saw or who knows what, but, um, somebody was shooting at us mm. and I remember feeling fear and everything. And then I looked around and he was laying down and had a, um, you know, I mean, maybe my mind couldn't conceptualize what it would be like to actually be, shot because i hadn't seen anything like that but um i just saw a red ring around his eye mm -hmm. and he was dying and i uh, i had all this like intense love but i couldn't do anything about it and i was losing him and i just thought that was profound that 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 yeah. happened and then you know i remembered it my whole life I think it's very profound too. Thank yeah. you, thank you very much for sharing that. Uh, can I make a few comments on that dream you had from what I've yeah. heard so far? Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like we need to cry from hearing that. To be completely frank with you, um, <clears throat> so um, over the last two years, um, I've been. I mean, this is an area that I'm exploring too, but I've been pretty thoroughly convinced that when you have these really vivid dreams. Uh, they're a different, they're like a different state. Um, like, yeah, I mean, it could even be from like maybe a partial past life or something. 
Well, like, so, you know, we have a spirit body and we have a physical body. And when we have yeah. really intense dreams that seem really realistic, um, it, it is a real event that's going on while we're sleeping uh, within the spirit realm with our spirit bodies. And mm -hmm. so, so that's where you see all that clarity. And then this person that you couldn't see too well um, was another spirit that wanted to hide its identity. So it could have been a family member that you knew, or it could have just been somebody who wants to hide their identity because something happened. And who knows, this could have been your soulmate. Um, statistically, it seems like soulmates are anywhere between like an age difference, anywhere between three years to 15 years. It seems like it's a really common thing. And it seems a lot less common that soulmates are born the same year as you or even within the same year or two years. And it seems uh, even less common that it's more than 20 years uh, difference. Uh, but so, and, and you know, your, your soulmate, <clears throat> you know, people who are having a desire to find their soulmate, like they have to realize that their soulmate may, may be the same sex as theirs or somebody who, um, you know, someone who's gay. Uh, yeah, of course. Like, because they, may, they may not realize that their soulmate yeah. could actually be the opposite sex. So that's a, like a hard thing to find. Um, and what helped me find my soulmate was opening up the possibility that perhaps it was the same sex and I was, uh, you know, just misled through things. But so, so what happened here, um, the rest that happened with him getting shot and stuff, you know, it could have been your soulmate, like getting into more of a dream state where things are communicated with images and such. And, you know, if this is a soulmate thing, he could have been telling you when you were young, like, hey, I, I can't wait to meet you. Um, you know, we're here meeting each other. Uh, you might think this is a dream because when I was on earth, I thought things like this were a dream. Uh, but at the same time, um, I want to let you know I'm not on earth right now. You know, I, I died and here's what happened. And, you know, we'll see each other uh, in the future or, or you can even become more mediumistic and we can talk together. So uh, that, that's yeah. all about that. I don't know if it's right, but my emotion. Uh -huh. It could have been, but it was surely very dramatic and emotional for me. Mm, I bet. Being such a little kid, you know. Man, I, I bet. I can only imagine. <laughs> um have you checked out um well i'll tell you what um <clears throat> what really helped me with like the soulmate concept was one like i used to read drew and melchizedek books and they were very one of his books that are like have you read anything from him uh-uh well one of his books he has like a two series books from the ancient secret of the flower life Book one is very like male minded, you know, like very logical and stuff. And so people who are like very logical and all that crap uh, will embrace it. <laughs> and that book helps them transition to being able to think more, uh, you know, uh, female like, circular, or um, less logical. And the second book is totally like not of this logical world. It's very emotion based and it's incredible. But in there, it talks about like, you know, immortality, reincarnation process or incarnation process. And it talks about a lot of things. So it really opened up my mind. And then eventually years later, like five years later, when I ran into the divine truth channel on YouTube, um, that had like, I, I really had this desire to find my soulmate because like, it was something I remembered when I was a kid and I just knew it was there, it was something in my heart. Um, and I wasn't interested in these intellectual distractions. And especially after eating like nothing but fruit and raw foods, for two years at the time, you know, I felt very emotionally open to it. And when I ran into the soulmate material on the divine truth channel, all I gotta say is Ernest, that stuff, like, it, well, it's very interesting. It was very interesting to me, but two, I went out and practiced what it was saying to practice to, to basically run into your soulmate or be, become in contact with your soulmate. Well, um, and all yeah, I gotta say is that shit works. Like, like focusing the attraction so that you like the magnet, so to speak, so that you both are magnetically drawn to each other. Or? Yeah, yeah, I would say like, um, I mean, the story of how I met my soulmate, um, like I knew it immediately and I was extremely skeptical too. You know, I felt like there was some spirit influence and stuff. Uh, but one of the first things I practiced that I'd never practiced before that absolutely helped me with this 
were two things. One, <clears throat> to pay attention to every single thing that attracted my attention. Um, you know, it may be a distraction, but just to pay attention. Why did that grab my attention? But two, an even bigger thing that I first practiced that majorly helped was uh, being willing to be vulnerable. Like, so what? If somebody's going to rip me off on something, okay. You know, if, if, if it goes wrong and I was being vulnerable, then let myself feel how that went bad and how this person's a piece of crap or how this person tricked me, whatever. Let myself feel those emotions. But allowing myself to be vulnerable was like, was huge. I feel like I am very vulnerable. Um, yeah, so that but, won't help you. But not, me. Not, but not stupid vulnerable, you know what I mean? I mean, I'm very yeah. aware of my surroundings just because of yeah. my um, lessons that I've learned in life. Mm -hmm. You know, but I'm very, I always give the person the benefit of the doubt and I let them, you know, prove by their actions not their words, you know, who they are. Yeah. At this, at this moment anyways in life. Because <laughs> we all can change, right? And that was something that I really needed to learn in practice that drastically helped me in getting in contact with my soulmate. Um, I'll send you some links for that. Like, it's good stuff. Okay, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I wish you could see my dog right now. She, I wish so too. I wish I could see your face. <laughs> she, I, I'm laying here, and she, uh, well, I have, I'm kind of like, you know, up on my elbows, mm -hmm. and uh, she walked right up near my face, and kind of like put her, her uh, head right onto my head, like we bumped heads a little bit, and just kind of sat there for a minute. <laughs> it was really mm -hmm. cute. Awesome. But um, yeah. I mean, there's, it's, it's all interesting. This whole life is interesting. Well said. You know, I just, I don't know exactly, you know, you have, we have all these different theories on what it's for. Everybody looks at it differently and that's, that's interesting too. Um, but there's almost a part of me that feels like, you know what, you're just not supposed to really know. You're not supposed to try to, you know how some people want to go from one level to a higher level into a higher level till you meet God. And it's like, where do you get that idea? I mean, <laughs> I think we're just supposed to have this experience and then move on. Yeah. You know, when I, mean, when I was a kid, I felt that way. I felt very much like everybody go, what's the meaning of life? And, you know, I was a kid and I was thinking to live, right? Yeah. Cause I was to just to just have a human experience and whatever your experience is what you experience, you collect it and you take it with you. But you know, if there's something more to it, it all sounds good, but do we really know? Yeah. Because yeah. Mm -hmm. if we really knew, wouldn't there just be one way of thinking? Why is there, a million different interpretations because nobody really knows. Yeah. I, I think there, um, this really hasn't happened until the last six months. And by the way, this is an example of me being vulnerable right here. Um, because of a lot of hurt I had in the past. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, over maybe the last like six months to a year, I really started to feel that there is, um, one way, I don't know if you'd say it is of thinking, but you could say like there's one truthful thing, like um, like there there's something that is there's something that's it is the truth regardless of whatever perspective anybody has, and mm -hmm. that truth is just something that's truthful. Like um, you know, humans can be foolish, or or people are fearful right now. Like that's a very truthful thing that you can't get around. It's like well, it's how it is. There's nothing we can do about it. And, <clears throat> and I've been exploring a lot of things that, you know, for the sake of truth, I'm like what is truthful? Like, um, and that's been really inspiring for me and has insanely helped me, uh, with things. And, and now like something very vulnerable for me to say is that my goal, at least for the last six months, I have this long-term goal to 
I don't know how how else to say it other than to say to be in the celestial heavens, like to be like at the point of like love and truth and humility to feel my emotions, to be like just really developed in that and help others. Yeah. Like you mean to be on a different plane? Um, I mean, if I'm on a different plane, that's cool. Um, I would love. I would much rather accomplish or experience it here. I'm sorry. Oh, you want to? So you want to experience it here on this earth and this in this dimension, so to speak? Totally. Yes. And I guess, supposedly, from what some people believe, it's possible. Yeah. So. Over the last and one years. way to do that is definitely through raw foods. Totally. Or at least it's definitely a big step up. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've realized that, like, <clears throat> so I, I realized that people definitely can do it with raw foods, without raw foods, but it's like a disability. Um, it's like... I feel blocked, yeah, without it. It's so much harder to feel your emotions, which your emotions have so much en- so much information in them. You know, you can you can feel someone's intentions just by that. Um, you you can, uh, and I don't mean it in a fearful way, uh, but even just when you're really connected emotionally, you can you can know where they're going with communication before they use their words, and it's fun and it's great. But so it's definitely true. If you're not eating raw foods, you're not eating high fruit and hydration, and probably a lot of other things. It's so much harder. And if you're lying to yourself, it's so much harder to really be in tune with that, uh, your emotions. Yeah, that's true. You have to be true to yourself. So, so, uh, so you can be true to others. Yeah. I, I do want to say at, um, two thirty, um, he, he's probably running a little bit late. Um, uh, this guy Rolo and I know Rolo like personally. Um, so I'm hoping he'll knock on here cause I'd love to, join this both for you to meet him because i think he's oh. really like rollo he's he's such a sweet individual but like when it comes to like soulmate stuff um uh-huh. he's also um he's also paid a lot of attention to that and um he feels pretty strong that he's found his soulmate and by his stories that he shared with me they sound a lot like um the 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 mentality twisting and soul changing things or, or emotionally changing things that happen when you do find your soulmate. It's not this, Oh my God, my soulmate. Yay. Um, yeah. it's not this terrible thing. Um, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a mix of all sorts of things in a good way. You, I don't know how to explain it, but, but yeah, I, th- I think you would really enjoy talking with this guy. Well, because we learn from each other. We learn about ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> I think every interaction we have, you know, a lot of times we think it's the other person, but I think it's, they're all a mirror. We're all a mirror for each other. Everything that happens, you know, it's just another way to take a look at ourselves. And if we think about it that way, then we're going to grow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, Ernest, um, I'm, I'm going to get going here since he's, he's okay. here, use the restroom. I'm going to spend that time to, to link you both up. Um, I didn't expect to get completely booked for the first two weeks of doing Great. it. Yeah, it's a cool surprise. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, people do want to talk with me. Yay. <laughs> um, and, you know, I really hope that, I mean, you know, I'll be posting all of it online. Um, and I just really hope that it'll be really helpful for us all to like listen to and re listen to. And, and thank you yeah. so much for doing this. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time. Thanks, man. And, and it was good hearing your voice. Yeah, I'll, I'll make sure people know where to find you. You're a really good influence for people, especially, oh. especially. I mean, a lot of things, but you know, you post a lot on your, you know, your fruit feasting that you're doing now, and it's. I, I just um, really admire. I think. It. I think people get. I think people get a little upset with me though, and unfriend me when I started posting about conspiracy theories. <laughs> <laughs> but oh well you know not everybody's there what can i say yeah. and i don't know that it's true or not but i the whole reason i post it and it's so funny people just take it so so straightforward so uh what's the word um direct they just take it like oh now he's a republican it's like i never said i was a republican i never said i was in love with donald trump 
I just because I post opposing stuff that has that supports him. Now I'm a Trump lover. You know, it's like, no, I want to see all different angles. Yeah. You know, and if anyone ever took the time to instead of pointing their finger at me, actually talk to me, they'd find that out. Well, you know, so funny to me. I think that's a great lesson for a, a lot of people to learn and still including myself is everybody has something really valuable of their perspective to share. Yeah, and what I found out so far through it all is the Democrats are just as creepy as the Republicans. And just what I I thought, I just proved it to myself is all I did. Instead of <clears throat> sitting there going, yay, Democrats, yay, they're the only way, yay. You know what I mean? Yeah, I really, I really feel like that if you, if that comes into your life, um, like, for example, posts, like, like, I think Facebook is the absolute best law of attraction tool. Like, like I, I feel like it's one of the best tools to finding what needs to help you or what's going to trigger you or what's going to help you feel some things emotionally. Yeah. Or what there's so much stuff about. there. Yeah. And I really feel like I'm starting to feel more like the only reason why that friend that unfriends you ran into your post in the first place is because it can help them. Yeah. Well, if nothing else, it showed them how blocked they are because they weren't willing oh, yeah. to even take a look at it. They just assumed the worst and now I'm a bad person. So bye-bye. <laughs> oh, well. And I've done that. You know, when I when you really look back, all the things people have done to you, you've done that at some point to somebody else. Oh, totally. You know? So it's that's okay. Good. It's all right. But anyways, I know you got to go. No, that's a great stopping point. <laughs> <laughs> what you just said yeah. it's happening to you for a reason like maybe it's something you have to emotionally process or well to humble us more so that we're not so uh full of ego because mm -hmm. we come into this world and we're trained to be full of ego you know and we got to get out of that we it, it, to have peace and and tranquility we have to get rid of ego as much as possible and put it back into its place ego there's a healthy ego but there's an unhealthy ego too and unfortunately most of the people on this planet have a lot of the unhealthy ego and that's why we see all this crap happening instead of coming together and loving each other we're all the same we're all human and so are the animals yeah thank you Ronald. <laughs> <laughs> all life should be respected yeah man Thanks. Really appreciate you sharing all that. Yeah, thank you. You too. Great talking to you, and we'll talk soon. All right. See you, man. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. So, uh, Ernest is on Facebook. Let me 